For those of you that don't know me, my name is Erica. I'm a self-taught oil painter from Portland, Oregon. I am a mommy to two, and I currently make an original piece of art every single day, and I share my journey online. And so today, we are going to be discussing mediums for oil painting, and we also have the whole Gamblin team today um, with us to answer any of your questions if I'm not able to. Uh, so uh, we have Pete. Pete, do you want to introduce yourself? Sure, I'm Pete, the president of the Illinois Spellers. Hi, everybody. Okay, great. And then, Pete, can you let them know, like, if they have a question in the chat, like, I think Mary's going to be doing some um, answering. And then if they have even more questions, they could probably go to gambling.com and um, email, uh, like, if it's, like, a really big question, if we don't get to it. Is that right? Correct. Mary, our product, product specialist, is online, and if you type your question, she'll answer as best she can. Please send them to the entire group as we can. We don't have the time to direct message folks, so to, don't be bashful in, with your questions, and uh, thanks, thanks for being here. Oh, my gosh. So, well, welcome. So, let's go through all of the supplies first. Oh, and um, they put the photo reference. Um, in the chat, I believe. Is that right, Pete? Did, I believe yes. so. Um, and they also emailed it to you. So it should be one way or the other. Just ask a question. Let us know if you don't have it. And then they can put it in the chat for you just for the reference because it's birthday candles um, this week um, for painting. So let's go through supplies. Okay. So the first thing, just in case you weren't here last week, we're going to be doing the 1980s gambling set and this is kind of what it looks like in, that you get at the store and I just wanted to show it to you because I already opened mine so it comes like this and this is pretty much everything you're going to need in order to get started um there's a couple other little things but this is such a great kit it comes with pretty much all the paint you're going to need um and what I love most about gambling paints especially is the richness of pigment and they put so much TLC in every single tube and it's also locally made right here in Portland. So um, let's get into it. Uh, also in the kit there comes a panel and I'll show that to you. It's a panel and it looks like this and it's from American Easel in Salem so it's also from Oregon. So how cool is that supporting locally? I love that. And it's and, and the quality is fantastic. Okay, so let's go through that kit. So in our kit, we have um, Al's Crimson, and this is kind of a rich red. And then we have Cad Red Light, and it's a red that is kind of more of an orangey red. It's actually what I use on my current palette at home. I love it so much. It gives you that electric, like, red color when you put it down. It's fantastic. And um, we have Cad Yellow Light. And then we have an Earth Tone, which is yellow ochre, or like a Earth Tone yellow. And then we have Thalo Green, which is my current favorite, 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 million favorites green. Um, ultramarine Blue, I also use these two colors on my current palette. And then we have Ivory Black if you need it. But I'm today, I'm going to show you how to mix your own black. But you can always use the Ivory Black. Okay, so let's get into, um, oh, I'm gonna be showing you, I'm using the paint brushes from Michaels. They're the Artist Loft ones. I just picked up a pack, they're pretty great. I love a synthetic brush. You can't go wrong. Um, when you're picking out a brush, you want something that is, feels good in your hands. I sometimes like a longer brush, um, then you can kind of play around with your brush strokes. But, you know, when you're picking out a brush, pick something that feels good in your hands. You can't go wrong. Um, so I got a couple of those. Um, okay, so let's go get into our mediums. So the first thing in um, that we're going to be using for our mineral spirits is Gamsol. And it's right here. It's fantastic. I love it. Um, I already have the same jar that I was using from last week. Um, if you weren't with us, all I do is just stick it into a jar with a lid. And that's it. And you can just use like a jar that you have at home. And it's okay if it looks a little, it got a little shaken in the car. But what happens is over time, all of the pigment, here I'll show it to you on this camera, all the pigment settles down. Okay. And then if you want to, if you have, um, if you're, have a good practice is you take another jar and you just dump in the clear and you leave the mud and then you can wipe it out. 
And that's it. And then you have the clear mineral spirits left over. Or you can just use it like this. Like it's not a big deal. That's the one thing is that there isn't a lot of like, you can just go with the flow with this. Okay, so we have the Gamsol. And then today we're gonna be going over refined linseed oil, Galkid Light, and the solvent-free gel that comes in your Gamblin pack. So you don't even have to get it. It already comes with it. So you don't even have to worry about it. Okay, so let's just learn a little bit more about it. So when you buy your oil paint tube, it already has linseed oil mixed into the pigment. Okay, and so what linseed oil does is, let me just make sure I have all my notes because I want to make sure you have all the right information that you need. Okay, so what the linseed oil does is that it slows your drying time. Okay, so this is something you don't need a lot of. Uh, what I use it for in my studio is I just put a little dab in the corner and add it if I need to. But some people use their mineral spirits and put a little bit of this in it and you know, you can just play around with it. So it's just if you need a little bit of extra, it like gives it a little bit of extra flow. And it's also if you want to slow down the drying time. Okay, Galkid Light. So a lot of people use this to make your, the oil paint dry faster, okay? And I use it the same exact way that we just talked about. I sometimes put a little dab in the corner and then I just add it to my brush and my paint and it increases the flow. My knowledge is super basic of all these mediums and you don't really need to know a ton of stuff about mediums in order to play. So permission granted to play for sure. Okay, so let's get into it. This one, solvent-free gel. Okay, so it, this is the big mama tube, but we have the little baby tube that comes in the packet. But this tube is gonna last you so long. Like you don't need, you don't really need the big tube um, until you're ready for the big tube. So don't even worry about the big tube yet. Okay, so what this does is it, uh, let me see. It has thicker paint and it adds gloss and it's kind of in the middle between the linseed oil and the alkyd light. So it's kind of a medium flow. Is that right, Pete? I just wanna make sure I have it right. So you have one that is the slow drying, one that's the fast, and then the solvent free that's right in the middle. Is that right? Correct, and the solvent free gel has a bit of body to it. Mm -hmm. So it's gonna help you make these kind of luscious a juicy bar extension mm -hmm. your brush work, whereas both linseed oil and galkid light will kind of flatten out your marks and smooth out the surface of your paint. Mm -hmm. So if you like a little texture, consider the solvent-free gel. If you want to speed up your drying a little bit, mm -hmm. consider the galkid light and the refined linseed oil is the, you know, Peters have been using it for 600 years. It's what's is that all? Is that all? <laughs> just, just It's only been around a, a few days, uh, 600 years. Um, okay, that's pretty cool. Okay, so we have all that. But I also want to show you guys, and you can get this on the Michaels website. And this is like your little fun size of every medium that, is it every medium that Gamblin has to offer really, Pete? It's most of them. And it mm -hmm. gives you, it's priced so that you can experiment and feel the mediums we offer that have the most texture, like a cold wax mm -hmm. medium and those that are thinnest and, and fastest draining. And it's a great value. And it's, mm -hmm. as Eric mentioned, it's available on michaels.com. Mm -hmm. It's not in stores at, the, at this moment, but it's easily available from Michaels.com. Yeah. And you know what I love about this pack? Because I bought this pack many years ago. And what I love about it is, is even though these are like little bottles, it lasts you forever. Like this is everything you need in order to play and get started and find which medium speaks to you. Um, what I personally use in my studio practice is I have the linseed oil and I have the alkyd light. And, uh, and I have been experimenting with the solvent free and that's been pretty fun the last few weeks. Okay. So we have, we went over everything. Um, and you know, if you have any questions, please let us know. We're just going to start painting and um, let's set up our palette. Okay. So our palette, I just laid out all the colors. And so let's just put them out. Okay. And this is like my favorite thing. It's like putting it right on, squeezing the tube, putting it out. Okay. So I have the Owl's Crimson 
And then I have the CAD red light right here. And then we're just gonna add a little bit and a little bit goes a long way. So you don't need a ton. You can always add more if you need to. Okay, CAD yellow light. And look how buttery that is. And so I think Pete, you were saying last week that someone had a question is why did I pick oil paint versus all the other mediums? And I think the one thing is, is I fell hard for oil paints because as soon as I tried it, I was like, oh my gosh, what have I been missing? First of all, because it's like that buttery feeling and the way that the paint flows and there with oil paint, and this is special to oil paint is that you can thin it, you can thick it. There are a million different ways to play with it and you can make something that's custom to you. And even though oil paint is an extremely old discipline, it's been around for many, many years. And you know, what's cool about it is, is there's a lot of different ways to do one thing, but it's super simple. Like it's super simple and there's not really a wrong way to do something and you can change up your style and make something new and you don't always have to do something, you know, the same way twice if you don't want to. Okay. Okay, I just put the ultramarine blue down and then we'll put the black in the corner. Oh my gosh, look how cute that palette looks, you guys. And I also got this palette. This is an artist left palette, so you can also get that at Michael's. I mean, they kind of give you everything that you need in order to get started. Okay, I'll put those up. Okay, and then we'll do a little bit of the gel right there. Okay. So it was my daughter's eighth birthday. And so I thought it would be fun to do birthday candles. Um, so our theme for our party was um, unicorn puppy Pokemon. Um, the cake was a little obnoxious, I will admit. Um, but she had like the best time and she wanted those blinky TikTok lights for her room. So mission completed. Um, we got her that cake and some lights and she was ecstatic. Okay. So pick out your brush, whatever feels good. Okay. And then I just dabbed it in the mineral spirits. Okay. And I just like to do that just to kind of get the flow going. All right. So let's just do our starter sketching everybody. And you guys can do more than one candle if you want to. I put a couple different candles and a little bit of cake. So just have fun, do what speaks to you. Um, I'm just gonna do one so I can help answer any questions that you have. And then, okay, I just dabbed in the ultramarine blue and then I'm gonna do a little bit of the cat red light and that's like a purpley color. And I'm just gonna do a little quick little sketch. Okay. There we go. I mean, the one thing I love about birthday candles is it definitely sets the mood, you know? Okay. And, you know, feel free to sketch in any color. I mean, there's a lot of people have their color that they sketch with and it's usually a burnt sienna or a cat red, but have fun. Okay. So let's get my lines going. How is it looking everybody? Okay. All right. Looks good. Okay. And then I'm just going to dip in the mineral spirits and then I'm going to use my paper towel and wipe it up. Okay, so I'm gonna show you how to mix black. We're gonna do that first, but I just wanna give you a little tip when we are going in to block the color, I'm not going to get, I'm gonna do it close enough to the candle, but not touch the candle because we'll get to our edges later because the edges, is when you want it to kind of take your time so that you get your lines right um, so that it looks real. Okay, so let's talk about mixing black. So you can always pick your ivory black to mix or the fun thing about oil paint is you can mix your own and make your own recipe. So I'll share with you some of my recipes. Um, 
And when I tell you how to do it, you can always use your finesse because when you mix color, it's not like baking instructions where you have to get it exactly 100% right. It's kind of like, you know, if you just try and experiment and get it close um, because something truly isn't like that black color, like black, black, it's usually like leans to warm or cool, or maybe it has a tint of a color. So feel free to experiment. Um, okay, and I'm gonna get a little bit thicker of a brush so that it's a little less work for me. Okay, and I'm using, what's Artist Laugh number two? Let me see if I can a little bigger. Okay, I have a nine Artist Laugh and this looks like a round. Okay, so I'm just gonna do a quick little dab. All right, so black. Okay, so I like this kind of black, it's red. And this is just your complementary colors. And you see, like, so what I did was when I was mixing, I took 50% cad red, 50% green. And I think it looks a little bit more maroony, so I don't think I got it 50-50. And you can just add a little dab of that green and just put it in. And then you can just see if you get it right. And this is one of my favorite blacks, but if you want, you can add a little bit of blue and see what it looks like and see what you think. And it's kind of like, I like that. What do you guys think? Okay. So let me just try a little bit of the solvent out. And this is when you can just start to play. And the reason why I picked the candle is because when you wanna experiment with mediums and you're kind of new to it, you can experiment in something that's like one full color so you can see how you like the flow. Just like that. Okay. So I thought, Pete, we could ask some common questions just to kind of, you know, because when I first started with mediums, I just like kind of bought everything and I winged it and I wasn't sure what everything meant. And then I was like, oh, maybe I do have questions about it because I'm kind of more of a feeler where I'll just like jump in and try it and see what I think about it. So um, I guess my first question is, is, what kind of mediums do you need to get started? And I'll give my answer and then Pete will give his answer because, you know, Pete's like super technical and I'll just give you my answer from like a self-taught person. Okay, so what mediums do you need to get started? Um, the mediums that you definitely need to get started are your mineral spirits. Number one, you need it. Your mineral spirits is basically like your water component. It thins the paint, it increases drying time, your gamsol is fantastic. It's This is it. This is amazing. Do it. Okay. No brainer. Okay. Um, the other thing I would recommend is getting that starter pack, but if you don't want to commit to that, trying this out, the solvent-free gel and experiment a little bit with that because it comes with a kit and you don't even have to worry about it. Um, then the next level is, I think I would try the linseed oil. Um, because then you can add a little bit to it because remember your paint tube already has the linseed in it and it might just need an extra little bit of boost. So what to kind of, um, what do you think you need to get started, Pete? Honestly, I think you, I think you answered that. <laughs> I mean, people, if you're going to spend some money as you get started, spend your money on color and uh, yes, forever. Colors are going to help you create what you want to create. Mediums are just there to help you go where you mm. can go. They're not a destination in and of themselves. And so if you find one that's working for you and you're getting what you want, then just keep going. And there's there's not a need to, um, to, to try a bunch of different ones. And there's no medium that's going to make you a, a better painter. There's no secret sauce, if you will. It's whatever works for you. What? There's no secrets? Of course there there has to be at least one little secret the secret is is you get the snack pack and then you can try that and so this is what i want to do this weekend you guys is like i um i forgot about the cold wax medium and i'm so gonna try it this weekend and experiment because um you were telling me before we started that you can mix it and it kind of creates like a here i'm just gonna open it up and get it because i want to tell you what i'm gonna try this weekend. is you can mix it and it makes it thicker and so does it create like a like a, is it like a frosting kind of texture? 
very much. It, it makes your colors very thick and very matte. And for mm -hmm. those of you that want to add that texture to your work, it can be it can be a lot of fun. And um, you can also get kind of a translucent layer, like in caustic work. If anyone's ever done encaustic work, and if you haven't, it's fine. Don't don't worry about it. But cold wax is made from pure beeswax, and it and it really helps dial up the texture if that's something that you're playing with in your work. Oh, and can you tell me, could you remind me again what um, the solvent free gel is made out of? Because I think you were saying it's made from vegetables, right? Correct. <laughs> so the, the solvent free mediums, uh, we offer the gel that Eric has talked about, and there's mm -hmm. also a solvent free fluid. And they're, they're made from plants. Uh, one is the soybean um, and specifically soybean oil. What can't soybeans do really, right? Yeah. Right. And, and then the other ingredient is safflower oil, which is from pressed, um, pressed safflowers. And so when you're working with the solvent-free gel or you're working with the solvent-free fluid, you are working with basically a vegetable oil like you have in your, in your kitchen to cook with or, or to make. Um, you know, a uh, salad dressing with. Oh, okay. That's so cool though, because then you know that it's like coming from plants and that's how it's made. And I love the buttery texture of it. Um, so how does everyone's painting look? Are they liking that they're black that they made? And if you aren't feeling your black, you know, feel free to add some of that ivory black if you like, don't like it. But I always like not a true black. I like it where it's a little bit tinted, where it kind of leans. And it kind of makes it, in my opinion, more special because you're kind of like what I'm doing is I'm going back and forth and kind of mixing my black with the green and the red and maybe a touch of blue. And I just kind of keep playing with my color because it doesn't have to be straight from a tube. And that's what I love most about oil painting is that you can kind of play with the color, mix it up. And, um, you know, it doesn't have to be like that straight one color it can you can kind of use your imagination and your mixing skills and make something unique to your you know style okay and the other thing i wanted to talk about is um can you mix mediums absolutely 100 percent. so when you get this little fun pack it's like you can you know try a little bit of this try a little bit of that and um, what's cool is, is you can make your own recipe if you want to. Um, for a long time, I mixed the galkin and the linseed oil, and I still go back and forth. Um, so you don't even have to have just one thing that you use. You can play. So Pete, I'm curious, what do you have on your easel? What do you use for your medium? I, I don't use a lot of medium. Mm -hmm. I use a little bit of um, the solvent-free gel medium a lot just to loosen colors up and give them a little bit more flow and um, I tend to be messy and so for me gel medium is great because when I put it on my palette it stays put and a fluid medium obviously doesn't and, and I get I get sloppy so solvent free gel is real go-to for me mm -hmm. it really does almost everything that every painter needs and it does it you know completely safely um, you know using plant-based oils as, as we talked about. So that's, that's a favorite of mine. And, um, and then I really like Gamvar and our other varnishes. Yes. I know you'll be talking about that in the future. No, but that's the magic. In a, at the end of the month, we're going to be talking about varnishes. And honestly, once you, like varnishes are so easy and so like they make your painting magical. It is the secret sauce, but we'll go get into that. But next week, because you know, I'm here all month. So every Thursday, 3 p.m., I am going to be here with you painting. Um, and we picked a subject because we wanted to go over any questions that you're going to have when you start oil painting. And like I said, if you have questions, put them in the chat or feel free to email Gamblin, or you can always reach out to one of us on Instagram. There is no, I have, okay, look, I just want to be real with you guys. I have tried everything. I have experimented and tried everything and I have played with what works, what doesn't work. And to be honest, I always go for the simple route. And that's, what's awesome about oil paints is that you just need like this, this setup and your mineral spirits and a paintbrush and you're ready. 
and your surface. Don't forget. But you don't have to get something fancy. Like I have these fancy um, artist loft panels, but you could just do like the thin ones or whatever you have. Or even I painted for a really long time in like a watercolor sketchbook. All right. So just remember you guys, let's not get too close to the candle with the black because your flame, I want it to look like the flame. Okay, and then, and what I'm doing is just adding some cad red light and some more green to my black. And I just, this is what I do in my studios. I just make a big pot of like color and then I just keep adding to it. And it's okay if it changes a little bit. It doesn't have to be always the same color. It can be tinted. And that's when I think that it makes a painting more interesting when you see little swatches of different colors. Okay, let's get into that. Okay, I just dabbed my mineral spirits right here. One more little dab and then a little bit more of that. Boom. So Pete, you mentioned getting messy. I am also very messy. Like this is very clean for me. I usually like just get into it in my studio. And I think that's what's cool about it is, is they ever, you know, like I think you think of oil painters and you think that it has to be super tidy and pristine and it doesn't, you know, like for me, I just like keep my, you know, little setup in this tin and then it keeps all my paint together. So then it's not like getting on my table and stuff. And I used to like use a, you know, a pie tin and I put my palette in there to keep my paints in there, but that's pretty much all I do. All right, so we're really close. Okay, so your paintbrush is probably super dirty. I'll give you a couple more seconds um, just to make sure that you're, you know, getting all your blacks laid in and I'll just touch up a little bit more. Okay. Okay, so I'm gonna clean my brush. We ready? So I just dip it in here and it's okay that it's dirty water. Don't be afraid, it's okay. Okay, and then dab. Look how clean that is. See, look, it's not about the color of the Gamsol. It's about what your brush looks like. Like it's still a little dirty, but it's like, you know, and then if I want to, I can fold and pull. And this is kind of what I do. And this is just me pulling out the paint, just like that. And if it's not 100% clean, don't even worry about it. It's not that big of a deal. So um, I picked one candle today, you know, pick whichever color you want for your candle. Okay, so I'm gonna do that blue candle if you guys see it. And this is the ultramarine right here. And then I'm gonna add a little bit of that. Okay, look how pretty. Oh. You guys did not remind me. I have no white on here. All right, let's add it. All right, it just goes to show you like, even though I love to paint white, like with white, and you, this is probably gonna be the most popular tube of paint that you get, is that, you know, I try to not use my white until I need to use my white, because once your white gets into your color, then it's like, it's there, okay. So I just add a little bit of white, a little bit of more, and just, you know, get whatever feels right. Okay. Oh, and I wanted to give you one more little pro tip, you guys, with brush work. So as you can tell, you're putting down your color. Okay, you see that? And what happens is, is when you put your brush down on your surface, the paint pushes up through. And if you roll your brush to the other side, you can keep using your brush. You don't have to go back and forth. So let me show you. So it's like right here in the camera. So you're dabbing and then when it's kind of getting dry, you flip it and you do it some more. Okay, how are we looking, everybody? How is everyone's picture? Do we have any questions that we wanna, do you see anything that you wanna ask Pete? 
I can see people are working hard. There's a, there's a, no, there's a shout out to a couple of our younger painters, Arena. You can see plugging away on the painting and um, Albany as well. Um, so that's terrific. But I see, um, yeah, people are focused and maybe towards the end we'll ask folks to okay. hold up their that's good yeah we'll do that at the end that was so cool I'm just looking at my Kelsey one of you I think oh that was a minute ago and I just missed it oh what brush size so I'm still using that number nine but you know what do what feels good with you so I'm just using a nine round okay and so what I did was I just cleaned my brush with the blue and I just did a little bit of color uh now and i put the blue around the flame as you can see in the picture um now i am going to add the little wick which is the black right there boom there we go okay and here we go and then what i'm going to do is add a little bit more around oh what do you do with leftover paint well, I just keep it out and I use it for next time. Pete, what do you do with your leftover paint? There's, there's, a, lot of, there's a lot of options with it. Um, one of them is just to scrape it, mix it, and save it as a neutral mm -hmm. gray to use in your mixtures. Yeah, that's a cool idea. Make your own gray. A lot of people do that and okay. put it in an airtight jar that's or something cool. for their next painting session so nothing's, nothing's wasted. Uh, putting it in the refrigerator will slow down the dry time. Okay. And um, is another thing people do, sometimes covering it with saran wrap, sometimes not. Um, but but uh, I would say those are sort of the main options. If you're lucky enough to have empty tubes, you, you can mix that gray together and put it back in a, in a tube. Um, but, but um, you know, a jar, a small jar works, works just fine. So I saw something really cool and I have to share this with you, Pete, since we're talking about mediums this week, what I saw was someone, what they do is when they're done with their, and this is if you want to want to, you don't have to do this by any means. It's just one person's technique. Um, what they did was they took their leftover paint and they put it in a little mini glass jar, but then they added the linseed oil so that it stayed fresh because remember your linseed oil is already in your tube. This is just if you need it to kind of extend the life so, um, or, you know, slow down drying time. So I thought that was kind of cool because what he did, did was for every tube, he would do that with so that it would make it just last way longer, which just shows you how long one little tube of paint can really go. Okay, oops, I actually made that a gray. Okay, so what I was doing was adding the white part to the candle. And so I just took my titanium white and I just added a little tint of the blue and there we go. And let's try a little bit more medium to thicken it up. And what I'm gonna be using mostly when I get the top layers going is using that solvent free so that it can thicken up and lay on top. It just looks so, what was that word? Juicy layers. I'm excited to try that. Okay, so let's, do our candle. You know what? I have to say that my favorite thing about one of my favorite things about having kids besides that they're amazing is like the birthday parties because I love like the birthday cake and the birthday pizza, <laughs> right? Like I kind of get the extra large cake so I could have extra. And my kids get so mad at me because they, the, they found like for Nora's birthday, they noticed that I had a little fork next to it. And so the next morning they checked to see how much, how many nibbles I took during the night <laughs> when they were asleep. It's really true because I got confetti cake. <laughs> so delicious. Okay. So I added my white and look how pretty. And now I'm going to show you how to mix up your flame. I clean my brush really quick. Okay. And then I'm going to dry it off. Okay. So for my candle, so your black is here. So what I do for my flame is I take some white, a little dab of yellow. And then if you want to get super fancy, just a teeny touch of green, just like super tiny. And then add it to it, maybe a little bit more. Because remember, it's easier to add a little and versus like dumping it in, it's hard to go back. So it's easier to do it that way. So I have my candle color. 
And then I just put it on top like that. And I'm gonna add the thicker layers afterward. I'm just kind of making sure that my candle stays nice and like the flame stays nice and hot looking. All right, I have a shape I like. Okay, so now clean my brush. Okay, so do you remember what I said about how we left this white around the edge and now we're gonna go in and fill in our black. So I'm gonna go back to that black. And then what you wanna do is just take your time and just go around. And just take your time. Don't even worry about time or what we're doing because I don't want you to go too far into that candle or you wanna keep it nice and, and it's okay if some of your lines show because we're gonna do another layer on top so that it lays on top. Okay. And I'm just getting real close. And what I do to get really close on my edges, so I'm adding some black and some cad red, and I really like that touch of blue. So what I do is I kind of start far away and then I come in. And then I just work on my line. And it's okay if it's not perfect. We don't need a perfect candle. We're gonna, there. And then get it over here. Okay, go back to my black mixture. Okay, let's get around that candle. And then I'm kind of going back and forth with my brush like I was talking to you about before because so when I'm going like this, like when I'm going, I'm going to show you here because I want you to really, this is honestly like saves me so much time. Like I'm pushing the paint and the paint's coming up. And then when you're, when it gets dry, like what I was doing, then you just flip it like that. And you don't have to go back and forth. It's just that simple. So then I just roll it with my thumb. This is one technique I wish they would have taught me sooner because <laughs> it would have saved me so much time. Okay. So a little bit more green, a little bit more red. Don't worry about getting messy. Permission granted to like make a big mess on your palette. Okay, so let me get that edge. Very good. Okay, just wanna be careful around that flame because I don't want the black to get in there. And this is how you kind of keep the colors you know, true, especially the white. That's what it's just, this is just makes your life easier and keeping that true color or non-color. Cause is white technically a color, Pete? White is the unification of all colors. Ah, technical. yeah, that's what I wanted. What's the technical? Cause it's like, you know how they say like, you know, for numbers, zero isn't a number because it's like not a number. It's like zero. I think Erica made a great point about edges and having them be okay with them being imperfect. The, the, a lot of times people will um, smudge an edge in places on purpose and leave it crisp in other areas. And if you're trying to create something that looks a bit more realistic or a bit more emotional having those edges people will sometimes call them lost and found edges oh that's it cool it really helps if things look too perfect they don't really look right and and that's because our eyes as humans can't see everything around us with an equal amount of focus so the the focus point of your painting whether it's that that wick or wherever it is for you that would be the area where the things are most clear and then oh, oh, areas away from that would be the ones where they might be more blurry and mm -hmm. these are all tips that you're free to take or leave as you wish but it's something that, that i've learned and um it's sometimes helpful but smearing an edge with a, with, with with the tip of your pinky um sometimes helps to get the look that that you're looking for. oh pinky okay 
So I just want to really quick, I'm going to do the flame. And what I did was I made a big, so I took a big glob, is that the technical word? A big glob of the solvent-free gel and I put it into my white and yellow and a dab, a touch of green. And I'm just mixing it up and trying to get the flow right. There's a lot of green in it, but that's okay. So look. There, right here, this is what I wanted. All right, so get the color that you want and I want it super thick. And it's okay if my edges touch here because if you look at the photo reference, it kind of blurs out a little bit, right? But I wanna be careful not to pull it to the middle because if I pull it to the middle, it's like, you know, the flame is in the middle, not, you know, you don't want that gray. Okay, so white, let's get it. One other, yeah. we, we mentioned tips on on what to do with the leftover paint and yeah. gray. Sometimes what what we do is use that that leftover gray mixed up and paint the sides of these panels like Eric is using. <laughs> yeah. so then you, you know, you can put them on the wall and they look a little bit more finished without framing and without having to um, get a bunch more paint out just to paint the sides of, mm -hmm. your, of your panel. Okay, that's cool. That's a cool little tip. I like that. And you guys do, uh, can you tell us about the torrid gray thing? And I, that might just be a local thing, right? Sure. So we, we, we make a color every year called torrid gray. That oh, okay. Gray. That's right. Torrid. And that is a mixture of all the pigments that we filter out of the workplace and away from our master paint makers. We mix it into a paint. And of course, when you mix all of our pigments together, you get gray. And then we give that away to artists every year in the uh, in the early springtime. So you can make your own tour of gray, as we talked about a, a few minutes ago, yeah. just by mixing up what's left on your palette after we're after we're done today. That's so cool. So do you guys keep one, like at least one, to have for like the you know keeping the history of them, so that you have at least one out of you know like how many years has it been it's been <laughs> no we actually can't quite perfectly remember but it's mm. close to 20 years oh my gosh that's crazy we do save tubes but we end up giving them away because okay uh to friends that that uh didn't get their tube um in any given year okay i know and let me tell you they're hard to come by i know that i've tried to track them down and they're like we're out we're out we don't have any. Okay. So what I did was I added like a touch of gray to the white here, but I just want you to kind of have fun with the colors that you laid. Okay. So that's what I'm doing. I'm just doing some touch up now. Okay. So I'm going to clean my brush of all the white. I hope everybody likes their candle. I mean, birthday candles are like, I, I don't know. They're just so fun. If anyone, if anyone's up for it, um, if you want to hold up your painting for proof, Let's that would be, be fabulous. Uh, okay, Tate, I see yours. Candily, I like the multiple candles. Arena, that came out great. Jessica, I can see yours. And Chelsea, nice. I like those two. And Teacher Laura, I see, see your candle. Fantastic. Oh my gosh, how oh, cool fantastic. is that? And Sia, I'm sorry if I said your name wrong, but that's a really great candle you got there. And Kira that lost a tooth. Wow. I can see your, and, and you, I can't tell who you got someone else with you and your candle looks fabulous too. Terrific. That's Ma. And um, who else? Maureen Hurley, like yours. Holy cow, lots of color and texture. And Maribel, I can see. Maribel's got a great one, kind of an earthy background, mm -hmm. um, like a warm kind of brown. How many, how many tooth, what, how many teeth have you lost? <laughs> Just hold up a, a show of fingers. How many teeth have you lost recently? Is that Kira? Kira that lost a tooth. Okay, we lost you. That's okay. Oh my Song, gosh. That's a great one. Using teeth are pretty too. lucky. And E. Collins or F. Collins, I can see yours. That looks terrific. Albany, you're back. You took a break. Oh. <laughs> terrific to see so many of you guys painting. 
I know Erica can be hard to keep up with at times, but you know, you there's there we've got nothing but time these days, and so you can always come back to these another day. Oh yeah, absolutely. Or you can keep working after. It's totally up to you. Just do it at your own pace. You know, that's the fun thing too. And since they don't dry right away, you know, like let's say you want to go get dinner or have a snack or take a break. Can do that too and your painting's still wet so you can go, come back and play some more so arena who's one of our younger painters mm -hmm. checked in and said she's lost 12 teeth what? which sounds like my 12 year old daughter bitsy said i've lost so many <laughs> teeth i'm surprised i have any left oh how many teeth do you lose does anyone know um, the answer i mean you lose like your whole set i guess you lose your whole set right like I think my daughter's at, uh, she's just lost, I want to say six teeth. And then my son has not lost any yet, but we just went to the dentist and he said that boys lose their teeth later than girls do. So, and he, but he's really pumped and keeps telling me he thinks they're wiggly. <laughs> and what we do at our house, so get this, okay. We do the tooth fairy door. So I got a, like a doll door and I sprayed it with glitter paint. And it's the door that the tooth fairy comes through at night because my kids are such light sleepers that, um, you know, that we put it by the door so I don't have to reach under the pillow. But, the last tooth, my daughter was set a trap to try to catch the tooth fairy. <laughs> I know I'm in trouble. So she's, my kids are on to me. Okay. So let's get to that middle of the wick right here. And so I'm just going to go around. I'm going to look at my reference and I'm going to do a little bit of black or the black that I mixed, but you can use the ivory black if you want to. And then I'm going to use a teeny bit of yellow in the corner here and a little touch of white. A little touch more and then just go around and do you see and if i want if you want to get even fancier you can add that little shade around and just kind of do these long delicious strokes like this is like my favorite part is when you can kind of add the details and it makes it a little bit more realistic There we go. What do you guys think? Okay. And then even though in the reference photos, it looks like the wick was a little bit more like up in there and you can be more realistic if you want to. I get it there. And then I didn't even clean my brush. I just wiped it right there. Cause it doesn't matter. Like you can, I just want a little bit of color. Okay. And then I'm going to add my wick, a little bit of red. Okay. And then you can see that I had just my muddy brush and I just dabbed it in the white because I want to make this like play with my edges. And this is what Pete was talking about. Like, this is the easy way of playing with your edges without, you know, there we go. And just a brief, uh, yeah. brief plug here for Erica and Gambling oh, on yeah, Instagram. Yeah. Mary typed in the handles for for Gambling and for Erica, and Erica's got a nonstop stream of inspiration for painting every day for the last five years. Can you believe I made it that far? <laughs> I can't even believe I made it that far. <laughs> and then Carrie and Carrie, who's with us here, and her and her team do a fabulous job on. Gamblin's Instagram with information and inspiration to help you guys uh, get where you want to go and have fun painting. So check those out afterwards. And there's also a lot of resources, of course, on the website. 
and I, what I also love about you guys is that you guys are always coming out with new products and new things. So like, if you follow the Instagram for gambling, they're always talking about what they're working on and what's coming. And that's kind of so exciting. So it's not just the same thing. So if you, you know, you can see what colors they're working on, what they're working on um, behind the scenes. And I, I just love that. All right. All right, so we are just about ready to wrap up, you guys. Um, we have a few more minutes left. Um, is there, how are you, how are you guys looking? Oh, look like. Are they working, are they working hard? They're doing, they're doing Good. terrific. Good, job. Good, Hi, Jessica, I just saw that, by the way, they were terrific. Terrific, I like the glow you got around there too, the halo, that's terrific. And just a quick little tip, you guys. So like, I think my candle is too thick. So I'm just, I dipped it in the black and then I'm pressing really hard and then I'm just going straight down. Albany, I see yours too. Fun. The question came from Pat uh, about painting the sides of your panel. And of course, that's optional. That was mm -hmm. just an idea yeah. using that leftover gray. And he asked when to do it. And I'd say, definitely do it after you paint. <laughs> <laughs> I've done it. Okay, so this is how I do it. Okay, so this is like totally not professional, but it kind of is because I'm a professional, right? So this is what I do. Even Okay, so I take it and I'll just show you guys. I lift it and I just put my hand here and then I paint it. And then I take a soup can and I set it on a soup can. Like, so like, this is like similar shape, right? So it's just like this. And then I'm just really careful. And then it's like that. And then if I don't want this to be on the canvas part, I'll put it, I'll put a little, let's see if that works like that. But you can do it just like that. I mean, I would recommend having this dry first, but that's what I do is usually a soup can or I'll put a little board on top and then because I don't like it laying on the surface because then it's harder to pick up um, because sometimes you don't know if it's all the way dry and stuff and it just kind of lets it air dry. Do you paint your edges black or gray, Pete? Generally, yes. Oh, I can't okay. give you a good reason for why you should do it that way. You should do whatever feels good for you. Well, I have a collector that um, I've, she's commissioned several pieces for me and she always wants the edges blue. Always this ultramarine blue, it's her favorite. So I think you could always paint like your favorite color if you want to, or use your leftover paint. Or some people, if you want a more classic look, you do the black all the way around the edge, um, but it's totally up to you. So next week, I wanna talk about what's happening next week. Next week, we're gonna be going over color mixing, which is my favorite. Um, color mixing is probably my number one favorite, favorite thing about oil painting because it's like recipes. You could just go down the rabbit hole and have so many, so much fun playing with color. It is the best. And there is so much to learn, but it's like, you just have to have a basic, it's so basic at the same time. So it's super fun. And then the following week we are going to be doing, we're going to be kind of tying a bow on our. Um, all of our classes and talking about what happens after my painting is finished drying. So we're going to be talking about the varnishing, how to wire a painting, which is super important um, because, you know, it kind of, it's the stuff you need to know to complete your work and to have it be all finished. Um, so yeah, so I'm super excited for next week. Uh, the link should be up on Michael's to sign up for next week. I'm also going to be putting it up on my Instagram as a swipe up for you guys. Um, and I think Gamlin does that too. So stay tuned for more. Yeah. Is there anything you want to add, Pete? Just for, there's a few folks asking, but our last class, if you missed it, is yeah. available on Michael's. And yeah. you watch that with Erica. And then this class should be up by maybe Sunday if you mm -hmm. want to go back through yeah. and, and go over something again. Mm -hmm. And then just a 
special shout out to um, Fatima in India for getting up to three to so join us. And, and Kathy, I see your painting too. You've had it up for a while there. And yeah. Another great candle that, that came out. Oh my gosh. Yes. We want to see him uh, on social media. Also, I got asked a ton of times last week, like, what is the hashtag that you use? You want to hashtag make it with Michaels um, at, and then, you know, tag Gamblin and me. Cause I want to see, I want to see what you're making. Cause that's what it's about. This is what gets me excited about painting. I love seeing what you're making and yeah. creating. I see more yeah. finished work. So cool. On these Jessica and teacher Laura. Yeah, and then Pete, isn't this cool? They did this in like what, 45 minutes to an hour? Like how cool is yeah, that? Less yeah. than that, yeah, yeah, less than that. And you know what, here's an idea for you guys, if you want, if you love this, which I obviously love birthday cakes and candles, they're in my work, is you could take these minis and just do a couple different right. pens and then have it be like four or five on a wall if you want to. I think that would look super cool. Well, thanks everybody. We look forward to seeing you next week and um, really fun painting together with you guys. Today. All right. Bye guys.